Okay, hello everybody. Just make sure the microphone's working okay, which it is now. It wasn't initially, so uh, do apologize. Now, today's live session, what I'm going to be working on is on the body. I'm trying to see what I've got on the photograph here. The body of this lovely butterfly and also all the little finer hairs around there. But I might change my brush for that as well. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to add all the finer details looking on this, uh, this very nice looking kind of butterfly, which is a paper kite butterfly, by the way, if anybody's interested. So let's see how we get on. Now I'm going to be live for probably about 45 minutes or so-ish. So stay tuned. If you've got any questions as well, by the way, please post them down in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to kind of answer them for you. Right, you ready? Let's get stuck in. Now, first thing, as I mentioned, I'm going to do is get a brand new brush. Now, the brushes I tend to use are the size double zero, which is this one here, look. So I'm going to make sure I've got this one ready to go. Now, when I take these plastic ferrules off, the ferrule covers, and the brush covers, I push with my thumbnail and pull at the same time. At least that way around, I can make sure I'm not going to pull the metal ferrule off the wooden handle. I have, I've done that once before. Honestly, it's not very nice. See, it's straight away you've ruined a brush and you've got to try and fix it again. Now then, the colours I'm looking at, I've got my colour chart here, look, as you can see. So I've got the background colours, the leaf colours, the body and wings colours. So for the body, I'm going to be using lamp black, but mixed with that, I'm going to go for a little bit of French Ultramarine. Just kind of add a bit of colour to black as well. I'm one of these people that do use black. Yes, you can make your own for reds, blues, yellows, that kind of thing. It's entirely your choice. But I like to kind of use lamp black and then add a bit of colour to it. The kind of colour depends on the subject you're painting as well. So if I'm going to paint something with a warm kind of feel to it, I'll probably add a colour red in there, like a lizard and crimson or probably scarlet lake or something like that. But in this case, I want it to be a cool colour, so it'll be French ultramarine and lamp black. So we have to see what we've got in my palette here. So let's move everything out of the way a minute and we'll get stuck in. So say hello. I'd like to know where you're from and where you're watching from today. And it'd be quite interesting to know. I'd like to always like to know where people are from, you know, are from. So, so bear with me. We'll just get a little bit of colour mixed up here and we'll go for that. So first thing I need to do is get a little bit of French ultramarine. Now these colours in here are dried up from last week. I did say I'd try and save this from last week. So I was working on the wings. Wasn't so I've done the other wing as well. So I've worked on the top one, I've done the bottom one now, uh, using a, a variety of different textures and mixes of colours as we've been going along. So let's see what we've got there a minute. So French Ultramarine, get that one going first of all. And I want this probably to a more to a creamy, uh, creamy, oh I went into song then. A creamy consistency. There you go. Now I want you to relax. I'm going to try and relax and paint now while I'm talking to you. Which I do when I'm doing my online videos anyway, you know, the ones I do for Patreon. For my members there. And uh, it starts kind of nice, kind of relax into a painting. Just chill out while you're painting. Alright, okay. Now for the lamp black. I'm going to add that into the mix. As I mentioned, I want this more to a creamy consistency. Now I tend to work on four different consistencies. Really? Yeah. We've got watery, milky, creamy, and thick. All right. So we've got four different consistencies. So this now is getting more to the creamy state, which is what I'm aiming for. And when you're mixing colors as well, always try and mix more than you think you'll need, because at least that way around, you know, there's less chance of you running out and trying to remix that same color again. Especially when you're mixing uh, probably two, well, three colours or even four colours together. Because you find then that trying to get that same kind of tone, that same colour, is not, not quite as easy. You can do it, but it takes a lot of kind of remixing and retesting on scrap pieces of watercolour paper. Okay, so all I'm working with are my half, my half pans here, look, as you can see. And so I've had these for quite a few years. I do replace the ones in there, obviously. But the pox, the actual box there, I've had that maybe for about... 15 years, something like that now. So quite a while, I must admit. But what I tend to do is get tube paints and just kind of squeeze some of the tube paints into the kind of empty wells when I do use them up. I have got replacements for the half pans as well. you find the difference with the tube paints so is that they are more of a weaker strain, really. So they're a little bit runny, a bit creamier compared to the really hard half pans, which are 
obviously a more of a, con a thicker consistency. So much more pigment within the half pans as well. Now then, here we go. Let's see the rabbit in on Paul. Let's go for this and see what we can do. Now looking at the reference photograph we can see there, I've actually got quite a few things there. We've got the Art Hive. I am watching from Sussex. Your painting looks gorgeous. Thank you very much indeed. It's very kind of your Art Hive. Art, I can't say that. No. The Art Hive. Thank you. Bit of a tongue twister that one, isn't it? <laughs> now what I'm looking for, I think first of all, we've got the dark colour ready to go. So I'm going to go for this colour here, which is a mixture, a mixture of French ultramarine and also a little bit of yellow in there, which will be lemon yellow. And I think what I might do, actually, I'm going to get some more of the leaf green, which I've got here now, and pop that into there. Wash your brush out in between. I don't want to kind of dilute this one, I don't want to put a colour into this. So leaf green, pop it into the mix. And I'm going to water that down just a little bit. Okay, a couple of drops of water there. I want it quite watery, I don't want it too dark. And that should just about do. Now as per usual, I tend to have a piece of paper, a bit of kind of old scrap printing paper, which I use just underneath my hand there. At least that way around. I'm not going to get the kind of natural oils you have on your hand onto the watercolour surface. Now then, you can see why I've just got opened up a brand new double zero brush. I'm going to work on some basic details first of all around the front of the head. It's a very tiny area, isn't it? Very, very small. You can see that compared to the size of my thumb here. So very dinky indeed. So just add a few little extra details in there. And the same again on the side here. Because I can see the reflection from this leaf, which I'll paint in afterwards. I can see the reflection from the leaf within the white of the body. So this is actually white in reality, but because you've got this kind of extra reflective colour, We'll need to add that in there to begin with before we can go any darker. As per usual with watercolors, you really want to start off lighter before you go darker. So always start off light and gradually build up your your colors as you go along on the depth of color. However, saying that, what I've done in the past, as you know, with every single painting I do, I tend to use watercolor white which is what I've got on the back of this wing here. And then that kind of defeats the object because it goes the opposite way, doesn't it? So I've got the dark colours on and then I'll add the white over the top. It's a little bit different. Still watercolour. You can use uh, white gouache or gouache, depends how you pronounce it, as well. So if you want to do it that way around, you can. Okay, a little bit more. Okay. So that's probably about right for there. Now I'm going to go in with the darkest colour. Should we go for the darkest colour first? No, I'll tell you what I'll do. I still need some of this reflective colour down the leg. Trying to see if I'm going to zoom really close into my photo here so I can just see what I've got. I'll show you the photo. Let's go back to my software in a minute. I'll show you the photo. Whispering Cauldron. Hello, Whispering Cauldron. Beautiful. Thank you very much indeed. It's very kind of you. I'm glad you, well, hopefully everybody can hear me okay, so we'll see. Now, the reference photo, I'll see what I've got there for you. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can just see what I'm looking at. So this is what I'm looking through. So you can see, there you go, look at the head on that one. So that's what I mean by all the detail you can see. It's very tiny, just a few millimetres, if that. And that's what I'm trying to replicate at the moment for you. So just live on screen. Shall we leave that there? I'll leave that there, shall I? Yeah, there you go. So you can do it all live. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Now, looking deep into the legs, I can actually see a little bit of red. That's because I'm looking very close. I'm kind of pinching into that reference photo. So I've got a little bit here of alizarin crimson mixed with scarlet lake. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in there first. So always prepare the background first. In this case, 
the background will be the background of the legs and the body. Just want a little bit of that in there, not much, barely touching. Two hairs in air, that's all I'm using at the moment. Just a tiny amount. Tiny little bit there. We'll start to kind of um, map out the legs shortly once we start getting the, the kind of deeper details on there, all the dark areas. Because it really is just black, isn't it? Just about, but there's actually more to it than black, isn't there? You know, you can see, if you really pinch into that photograph, you can see all the details that you need to paint. However, with all photographs, you've got to be very large. So make sure you've got a big photo to kind of work from before you start in a painting, because uh, that can make a massive difference. It really can. Because that just enables you, as I mentioned earlier, to kind of pinch into that photograph and see all those little tiny details that you want to work on. Now the way I paint is quite fine, so because of that, to complete an area can take a little while, can take quite a while. So if you like fine art, you know where to find me. Have a look on the link down in the description below on patreon.com and you find it as well. Uh, have I got that on my screen there? Yes, I have. Top right hand corner, just up there, look. Patreon.com forward slash Devon Artist and that's where you find me on there. And I've got over 50 video tutorials on there for my members now. Um, and that's for $10 a month. There you go. That's not bad going, is it? Right, okay. It's a little bit of an advert for you. <laughs> now to go for the French Ultramarine and Lamp Black. You do have to be careful because you find that the colours do tend to separate as you work around. That's because the French Ultramarine is a granulating colour. Because it granulates, it will separate between you know from any other colour within your mixing palette. So you do have to keep kind of remix in those colors now what I'm trying to do here very carefully with the extreme tip the very tip just literally one air of the brush is start to map out all these little areas that I can see on the photograph itself now I'm not too worried if it's not spot on because I'm painting smaller than the photograph here to really kind of pick out those little details there's a white little section on the top of the head just there. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll just put a little line there. But I might have to blend that so I don't like to outline things. The thing is if you outline a painting as well, it can look a little bit cartoony, which I don't want to happen here. A little white area there. So then we can just fill in that, that one little area just there. And then fill in this eye. Very carefully. Taking my time. I'm not rushing it. Just something you should never do with a painting. Never rush a painting. Always take your time with it. Now normally if I sit and paint and just do a painting for myself, I mean normally do all my videos as I say is for Patreon, but when I'm doing a painting for myself, I tend to uh, just sit here with the radio on, relaxing, just enjoying working all the detail and just taking my time with it. You know, and the painting's finished when it's finished. Simple as that. Never ever tried to rush a painting, as I say. So I'll tell you what I'm interested in finding out as well from you guys watching this today, is what are you working on? If you're painting at the moment, if you're an artist and you enjoy the painting process, what's your current project? Just post it in the description down below for me. So I'd like to know, it should be quite interesting to find that out. Okay, it's just working around there. And now there's a little white area as well, just below the eye. Thing is with this as well, is that you really got to think about the highlighted areas. I've left it slightly pale. It's on the right hand side of the eye. I'm assuming that's the eye, because um, I remember I painted uh, something similar to this not long ago, which was a painted lady butterfly, and the actual eye wasn't that, and I kept calling it the eye on the video, and it wasn't. It was something else, it's a different part, and I realised, obviously on a later date, I thought, oh no, got that wrong. It's all about research first, isn't it? Now, looking at the front of this, there's a little round area there, barely touching. 
again it looks bigger when you when you zoom into the reference photo it can look a lot bigger much bigger than it actually is so therefore you've got a tendency if you're not careful to paint it obviously larger than it actually is as well so try and keep the dimensions right try and keep the proportions right as you want along okay a little bit more there because what i'll do i'll add a little bit of watercolor white on this as well just kind of you know sort of finish it off when the body's painted just working down to there and then to the side too what i might do in a minute i might zoom in just that little bit more for you just so you can see yeah a little bit closer up hopefully the camera should do that for you i'll give it a try in a minute so the thing is as usual when you start painting you can't stop so a quick look at there who we got whispering cauldron yes i can hear you just fine thank you very much indeed whispering cauldron there you go view the art hive i've just finished painting a rhino in watercolor i love painting wildlife yeah, i know the feeling i really do rhino now it's quite interesting that's because a lot of texture isn't there within a rhino a bit like trying to paint an elephant isn't it with all the little creases and details you've got to add in there that's got to be quite an interesting one to do and to be honest with you i've never i've never painted a rhino so uh, i do want to paint another elephant i have worked on an elephant before but obviously elephants are such beautiful creatures but then again so are rhinos what if you can paint a white rhino that'd be quite interesting wouldn't it as well that'd be very interesting to paint a white rhino and working underneath there now I'm trying to think about the white areas on here at the same time very tiny so if anybody wants to know the materials i use what i use what paper I use what brushes i use ask away i don't mind i'm here to you know kind of shed some of my information to you today if i can i've been painting for probably about 40 years now so quite a long time um yeah over 40 years actually i started when i was 11 years old so that gives some ideas how old i am i know getting on a bit aren't i i realize that now i don't want to lose what kind of train of thought here i'm just going to work out where things go because we've got the leg which comes that's the back leg which is barely visible so it's all about mapping out making sure that you don't lose your way because that goes down to there then we've got the white area here which is painted at the moment but that's okay we'll be adding white there anyway and that comes down to where the leg is now we've got a little area which kind of hooks into there and just very lightly comes down to here so again i'm just mapping out the area kind of give myself a bit of a guideline to work to so i don't lose my way some more paint and then try and see where that goes there actually oh yeah so that goes about there little tiny section around the area there and then that comes down to where the other leg starts now my eyes are flicking backward and forward backward and forward backward and forward it's like a broken record i know backward and forward to the reference photograph every few seconds that's how i tend to work that way because i've got such a short-term memory i've been told that many times by my partner joe because i've got such a short-term memory it kind of helps kind of you know keep it there for a little little bit longer for the things i'm looking at so have the photograph quite close to you i've got mine in front of me on a tablet at the moment one on an ipad or anything like that even computer screen a mobile phone anything that's big enough to kind of zoom into and look at the details in there and then you've got it right in front of you and you can just look at that now i know some people print off a reference photo i used to do the same thing but the only thing with printing off a photograph is that you very often print off and the color's not quite the same you know and um it's trying to get the color right because obviously printers have different inks and you print on different papers and different papers can print a different quality and the, the ink will react differently with different papers and so on and so on it's a it's a minefield no because i do my own kind of art reproduction prints and because of that 
you know, you tend to go into all of this and trying to get it exactly as the original is, or close as you can get it. But it takes a lot of doing. You've got to make sure the inks are right, you've got to make sure the, the settings are right, and all the way, to, even down to the colors on the monitor that you're looking at, the screen that you're looking at. Are they the right colors? You know, questions. There you go. So you can see what I mean. There's, uh, there's a lot to kind of get your head around when you're kind of printing something off. But if you've got something on a on a tablet, as I said, they can pinch into a nice, large, decent photograph. Then it's well worth doing so. Now, I'm just going to work out where that little area goes there. Got another little triangle area there. <laughs> oh, this is where it's probably his backside, is it, down there? Okay, give it a tickle while we're there, shall we? Yeah, there you go. And a new little area there as well. Going all the way around to the leg. Got muscular legs, this one, isn't it, as well? A little bit of muscle in there. Okay, get some more paint. Okay, what we got? Uh, let's have a quick look. Whispering Cauldron. What's your favourite watercolour, watercolours and brushes? Uh, and you also put, I find each brand... Uh, each has their own uniqueness. They certainly have, I agree with you there. Now, my watercolors I use are Windsor and Newton, mostly. I do use SAA as one option as well, but Windsor and Newton are the, the very often the ones I tend to go for most of the time. Um, and also Dale Rowney, so Dale Rowney is quite a good one. But yeah, my main ones are Windsor and Newton, and I use the, both the student and the professional quality paints. So the student ones from Winter Newton, as you probably know, are the Cotsman range. So I do use those. And I also use the Pro range as well. Just for the better pigmentation within the within the paints. And they also seem to go a lot further, which they do. So, you know, less binders and so on. So that's what I tend to use on the paints. And the ones I've got here, as you can see here, look. So these are all Winter Newton paints, a mixture of student and the professional quality ones. For the half pans I use. I'll just to give some general idea. Um, but I'd say I do use occasional SAA for some of their paints, but mostly for their white, because I do like the SAA white paint, which is quite nice. So it's got quite a very creamy and thick consistency compared to some of the other whites, which I've done a video on, by the way, on Patreon. Da -da 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 -da, on testing different white paints out. Okay. Um, as for the brushes, um, I tend to stick with the ones I'm familiar with more than anything I'm used to using. I'm sure you're probably the same as well. It's nice to kind of test out different ones here and there, isn't it? But the brushes I tend to use mostly are, for example, this one. And no guessing what manufacturer this one is. There you go. So it's Windsor & Newton. And that's a Cotsman range. It's a series 111, as you can see there. And it's a size double zero. So that's my main detail brush, which I use for probably a good 90% of a painting. I'll spend most of the time just using this one brush. Most of the time. The other times, I do switch occasion to a size 1 or a size 5 for one of the brushes I use, and that's by... I'll show you in a minute. That's by uh, Rosemary & Co. So Rosemary & Co. Rosemary & Co. I think it is. If you Google that, you'll find them. And they're a kind of family-run business, I think, and uh, they're very good. Their brushes are pretty good. I know other artists use theirs as well. So I'm just going to just map this out a minute so I can get the shape right before I show you a minute. Just a little bit, there's a bit of a knuckle there, look. There we go. So I've just mapped that leg out. Yeah, the one I'm on about, by the way, which is this one here. So this particular one is a Rosemary & Co. So Rosemary & Co. Can't say it today. Pure Sable Series 93. So Series 93 is the Spotter Series, and you can see that by how well, you know, that's come to a nice point. It's quite a fat brush, so it holds a lot of water, but it's also quite short as well. And the beauty about that, it gives you a little bit more control. So they're the ones I tend to use by Rosemary & Co. So the size five, and I've also used the size one as well, just to give us some general idea. And they are nice brushes, and you can get uh, the non-Sable version, the synthetic versions as well. Uh, for people that prefer to have the synthetic versions. So there you go, there's a bit of a plug for them. I don't get paid by them, by the way. <laughs> so let's just carry on with this leg now. Now, looking down this little leg, I'll tell you what, I'll zoom in a little bit for you as well. 
Just one second. Un momento, por favor. Uh, is that a bit better for you? So you can see a little bit closer. It might slightly blow it when you do want to do that, but we'll see how we get on. Now, one thing I'd like to ask you to do, because I'm going live for you today, is just click on that like and subscribe button down below. So you can click on subscribe, like, subscribe. And when you click on subscribe, if you click on that bell icon by the side of after you subscribe, every time I go live or put a new video on here, you should be notified by YouTube. Say, Paul's on there, the Devon artist. You know, what's called wildlife. He's on there live now. Come and join him. So <laughs> have a look on there. So click on subscribe and then obviously the bell icon. If you don't mind, that'd be brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Just as a way of saying, thanks, thanks, Paul, you know. I'll check the other questions in a minute. I've just seen a few more just pop up there. I just want to get a little bit more painting done. Tim, I need a little bit more of that red colour in there as well, that alizarin crimson and the scarlet lake. I can just see that's a little bit redder down this area here. I'm going to let that dry off a little bit before I uh, go in there. And just a touch more around that leg there as well. Now then. Uh, we got on there, so... We'll look Margaret Brownhill hello Margaret and watching from Kent hi Margaret how are you today uh, and I have the acorn drawn out ready to go oh ready to paint oh yeah on our patreon channel well done you um, have mild flu at present oh no feel sorry for you I've also got seriously overdue a landscape waiting to be done yes I don't normally do landscapes Margaret but I mean they are nice ones to work on something that uh, I'd like to have a play with at some point when I get time that is obviously I spend most of my time, as you know, as you very well know, recording the videos for our Patreon channel. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm going to show a little clip of this one in a bit, a two minute clip, and uh, it's been on here for half an hour, and that's the clip. I've put it on Patreon ready, a longer version of this clip. You've, you've probably seen it, Margaret. And that's the one for the swan painting for the next month's Patreon project. How to paint a very beautiful looking swan. That's what I'm hoping that people will see. So I'm going to show that in a bit as a, a preview on here. The first time I've put the preview here on YouTube itself. So stand tuned for that one. Or stay tuned for that one, should I say. And uh, that will be shown very shortly. Uh, once I've been on for about half an hour. So we've been on for 27 minutes. Well, there you go. That's not bad to go. <laughs> half an hour. Now I just want to paint this. Uh, there's a little thin leg in. Makes you wonder how they can stand up on these legs, doesn't it? It really does. Take your time with this. As you can see, I'm using the very tip. See how fine my tip is on this brush? The very tip of the brush. So we've got about halfway down, about there. I need to map this out. Because we've got a bit of a blurry line underneath. And then it kind of kinks a little bit. So back to the kinky area. <laughs> I'll rephrase that a little bit. Back to the little bend. And then pull that out. Bit of a hairy foot on the end there as well. It needs a shave. And just a little bit more around there. Uh, where's that one go? So this one kind of hooks down a little bit. Bit of a curve. Try to keep these nice and slim. It's got hairy legs as well, actually. It doesn't definitely needs a shave. It's got hairy legs than I have, and I have mine. I haven't got very hairy legs, so there you go. All the way down, and it comes to that little bit of a bump just there. Look, that's it. A bit of a bump on this side, and a little bit fatter on the top. See how gentle I'm doing this, very carefully. If anybody's noticed, I'm a left-handed person. So in other words, what I do is that all my materials are on my left-hand side. So my paints, everything is on my left-hand side. And the reason why I do that is because one thing I don't want to do, if I went over that way to get some water to dry, you know, to wash my brush out and come back over, there's more of a chance I'm going to drip the water onto the painting, which I don't want to do. And also just natural to go to my left side for the paints and the colours and so on. So that's that little leg there. Okay, a little bit more. All right, so I'll have a quick look at the questions on there in the comments and then we've got a little bit of a video uh, for you. We'll have a quick drink. 
and then we'll finish off this leg when I come back painting the other leg as well which actually comes down towards there looking at the photo and get the antennae in there as well okay right and also I'm going to carry on and add the watercolor white to the body at the same time well after doing the legs and the antennae okay right have a quick look on there see what we got so dum, 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 dum. I love this one and painted lady now one of my said oh yeah I hope they're on your to-do list as, as I said you know we've got 50 tutorials on patreon now number 51 including next month so we're, we're well two and a half years you didn't realize Margaret have been going on there now so quite a while um, let's have a quick look Whispering Colden, thank you, not a problem at all. Esther Marks, hello Esther, how are you today? I just bought myself the Dela and Rowney Aquafine watercolors. Yeah, they're okay actually, I quite like those. It's when you go into these, you know these discount shops that you can go into and you can buy, you get these discounted watercolor packs. No name, or some odd, unusual name. You think, okay, maybe. And you get a pack of brushes of the same. I'd recommend you don't buy those, okay? But your Aquafine paints are quite good. Yeah, that's a medium a medium range paint, which it is from the Dale Rowney. The Dale Rowney Aquafine are very similar, as in quality, to the um, the Windsor and Newton student quality ones, which are the Cotman range. So you've probably seen the Cotman range. And I think on my palette here, by the way, let's have a quick look on there, Esther. The Cotman range I've got here is that one there with the cerulean blue and the sap green, which is that one there. Oh, and also, the olive green and my Cotman range ones just give us some general idea what I use so I do use a Cotman range which is very similar as I say to the Aquafine range okay so anybody else on there remember if you want to ask a question you know where I am why well, you got me live for another half an hour I'll be able to do that for you but so now I'm just gonna have a quick drink so stay tuned and once I've had a quick drink after a couple of minutes I'm gonna play a little video for you to watch um, then I carry on I say complete all the dark areas, then I'll show you how to add the watercolour white over the top. Okay, so I'll see you very shortly, won't be long. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. Now let me show you some clips from my main watercolour video on how to paint a very stunning looking swan. Let's get started. And this one video will be about three and a half hours long. And I'm going to guide you right from the beginning all the way through to the very end on how to paint this very beautiful looking swan. And of course I'll be talking all the way through so you won't miss a trick. I'll tell you all about the colours we're going to use, the paper, everything that's needed. Including the reference photograph and even the outline drawing. Out on Patreon in March 2020. See you there. Right, well thank you for watching that little one for me. So that is next month on Patreon. So if you're interested in having a go at that one, you know where to find me. Let's have a look in the top corner up there, look. So just, uh, write it down, make a calendar appointment, anything you want to do, and give that one a blast. Because I'm going to release a part per week, and it'll, the last part will buy, be before the end of the month. So if you decide to leave Patreon at the end of the month, at least you'll get all the parts, including, don't forget, the PDF document which comes alongside with it, which is many, many pages long, which takes me quite a long time to write, you know, two or three days to write, something like that. And um, all formatted and edited by my partner Joe, and it's all ready to go, just for you to give a go at as well. Oh, and don't forget, by the way, on Patreon, we've still got two PDFs this month, this month as well as two videos for you to play with. Uh, one which is the, the Ren and the Robin, 
So give it, you can give those a go as well. With the, a lot of people do like those, and they've been going really well. So that I'll not just do one PDF per month, but this month I decided to put two on. So they oh, get them while you can get them because it won't be there next month. Now then, I'm trying to paint this leg in. Just down to that kind of bends, just way, just past the where the leaf edges there, and then comes up, uh, not probably parallel with the leaf, just slightly downhill, more towards like a ten o'clock direction, and then comes back on yourself. I'm trying to see how long that is actually. If I go probably towards about there, that's about right, and then bring it back up. There's a bit of a knuckle just there as well. Now, I'll go back to YouTube a minute. I've got the wrong screen on there if anybody wants to talk. Right, okay. So, I'm trying to work on this extra little leg here. Now, it's a little bit fatter at the top. Again, barely any paint on the brush. Now, when you load your brush, as I say to my members on Patreon, what you want to do is load it, roll it, and dab it. Just gonna put the, the knee on there a minute. Little knee joint. <laughs> so load it, roll it, dab it. And when I do that, all I'm simply doing, I'll show you in a minute actually, I'll show you the process. Just give you some general idea how I tend to work. Because I don't want too much paint on the brush when I do this. So I'm just gonna reload again. So I'm gonna load it, I'm gonna roll it, like that. Okay. Now I get some clean tissue paper. I've got a big kind of what of it in front of me here but I've got this as well just dab it once or twice on some tissue like that that's three times I know and then that will take any residual paint off the brush and then give you a much finer tip and also it could help prevent overloading the brush and put a big blob of paint in your painting how many times have you done that quite a few I know I've done it as well we've all done it I'm working down this little leg. What a nice leg it is too. Just down to the joint down there. And then towards the end of the foot. Just about there. Yeah, about there. Something like that. We can reinforce this one a little bit more now. By adding a little bit more paint. We're going to add some highlights in that as well. At some point. But these are very, very tiny. Now I'm just going to take some more paint off the brush in a minute because I want to put some fine hairs on here. And these are going towards like a 10 o'clock direction. So it's a few little, barely touching, barely touching. That's why I need to, I think we'll buy this one a big razor for its birthday, I think. Just a few more down there. Okay. And down the side as well. Now I'm going to get this one. He's the hairy leg on the side at the same time. Just a few. Yes, yeah, so I was saying about uh, the PDFs on Patreon. If you go on there, join at the five dollar level. Um, you can drop off at the end of the month if you want to. I don't mind. You know, I'm quite open. I'm a very honest person. As my, my my members do know that. Um, is that you will get access. You'll be able to download two PDF documents, which I sell normally for about four or five pounds each you know so you work that what that what that is in probably dollars you know what i mean so for a five dollar subscription which is you know non-recurring you can get those so you actually get your money's worth <laughs> and more yeah so now's your chance really for that okay so working down here now it's actually it's got a big foot actually looking at it it's quite large so i'm going to paint this in a little bit more there leaving tiny tiny gaps in between I don't want to make it a little bit rough looking poor thing just to add that in then reinforce again the color on the top now every layer you put on will get darker and darker even when you're using a dark color like this as well because obviously the the weaker the mix the lighter or the, the lighter it will dry and watercolor very often dries a little bit lighter than when, when you first put it on the paper depending obviously on how much water you've added 
within the mix. So let's just try and get this leg done there again. So we reinforce that one there. And a little bit of fine tuning now. Because what I want to look at next, once I've got the fine tuning done, just work on the top sections and then once they're done, we can then add the watercolour white. How are we doing for time? 40 minutes. So we've got a little bit of time left, not much. So any last questions you want to ask me, then you're more than welcome to. So I'll put a little a few tiny ones in there. Just a few. And there. Okay. Now then, the antennae. Are you ready for this? Take your time, there's no rush. Because you want to try and give this do this nice and neat if you can. Now these are very bendy ones. So I'm going to make sure that we kind of replicate the same as a photograph, just about. Just bring that down. I'm reloading all the time. I mean, these bushes are great. They don't hold a lot of paint, but I don't want it to. I want to just kind of gradually work on the details as I go along. Because at least that way, I'm not going to put too much paint on in one go. So for you, what's your favourite size brush then? You know, which, which is the one that you use the most? Have you got a particular brand, a particular size? Do you use sable? Do you use synthetic? I mean, this one is synthetic. Um, so I'm going to look down here. So that goes right onto the very top of the head. So that's one side. Keep reloading, keep repainting, carry on. <laughs> and then the other side of this, it's actually just a black line really, but I just want to make sure I've got the thickness about right. I don't want to over thicken it. Because one thing I know my members on Patreon tend to have difficulty with is, not all people, but some people do, is to do with when you're painting whiskers, for example. I'd say a cat or a dog, one of the two tools we do. And, you know, how to kind of get them nice and fine. So it's all down to practice and test it out first on some scrap paper. I mean, as you know, I've got plenty of scrap bits of paper here knocking about, which I tend to work from to test things out initially. Just to make sure I've got the right colours before the start. Even though the colours can obviously vary, which they can. That's better. Now for the other one, as we say up north. Now for the other one. Now this is a little bit straighter, bit of a bit of a kind of curl at the very top there. Again, my eyes are flicking backward and forward, backward and forward to that reference photo, just to make sure I can get it about right. And then that comes down to the back of the head, barely touching that paper, and just start again on there. A little bit more. Ooh, ah, just a little bit. We know a song about that, don't we? Do we all start singing together, shall we? No, no, Paul, no singing. Thank you. And then right to the very top. Just to finish that off, just widen it slightly there. Okay. There you go. That's those done. Yay. Now, try and see what else we need around the body itself because I'm going to go in with a watercolour white very shortly and the watercolour white will help kind of define some of the areas that we've got in there but I just want a few extra little lines within where the white's going to go because I need something behind that white for the white to stand out so you just you know light doesn't work without dark dark doesn't look what doesn't work without light you need both in life in general as well so we need to have a darkish colour behind the scenes, so to speak, for that to stand out. Now, I think I need to thicken this leg a little bit just there. Okay. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, I think that one there. Okay, Esther, thank you so much. Tried to find reviews, but it was a gloomy reviews. I was scared I wasn't wasting my money. No, you didn't. No, you were fine with that one. So the Aquafine ones are, are fine. I've actually got their paper here as well and the drawers knocking about somewhere. I actually bought a few pads. Because when I was doing lessons here in the local village hall here in North Devon, 
um, I did a local lessons, you know, with uh, some people there. And I used to supply some of the gear as well, some of the, some of the gear. And I used to buy the Aquafine paper as well, so it's not bad. If I bought it, then it's all right, honestly. It's fine. You'll be fine with that. I mean, the thing is, with any materials that you use, I always say to say to, to my members on Patreon, just buy the best you can afford because the problem is if you if you have low quality materials you find the colors that you use won't stand out quite as well they look dull they look drab and also the brushes apply as well so the colors the paper get something that you can you know medium quality at least because it does make a world of difference it really does in how the paint lays on the paper how it sinks into the paper even you know the way that the paper is um you know kind of made makes a big difference as well you know so you find that with all sorts of watercolor papers and qualities as you go through the process um, so always buy the best you can afford see paper has what's called sizing added to it the cheaper brands tend to have the sizing which stops it being like blotting paper but yet allows a little bit of sink in there as well when you add the water over the top the cheaper papers have the sizing on the top of the paper, on the surface of the paper. Whereas some of the more expensive and the better quality ones tend to have the sizing mixed in at the pulp stage, you know, when it's actually in the middle of being made. So they actually mix it in with the pulp of the paper. So it's actually got it within its main, you know, system within the main paper all the way through, which is obviously a much better system. So just bear that in mind when you're buying paper, you know. Um, if it's 100% cotton, that makes a difference as well. Um, a little bit of a bump on the top of the head there okay and just join those antennas on yeah why not let's stick them on the end there and i think we're about ready to use watercolor white now so you ready for this no what do you mean no of course you are here we go now watercolor white the one i use is one by saa which is that one there i'm not trying to advertise for them so I don't get paid by them but uh, that's what i use and that's one i've used for a few years now but there are different ones on the market so if you do decide to use white paint instead of reserving the white of the paper, which I know is obviously the more traditional method, then I suggest you buy something like the SA1 if you can get hold of it, or, so it's sa.co.uk, and if I can get the lid off a minute, bear with me a minute, I'll come back into the camera shop. Um, there's one made by Windsor and Newton, which I've tested as well, which is quite good. Uh, Sinelia do one as well. Or oh, the Windsor and Newton one, that's the titanium white, the professional Windsor and Newton paints though. For that and that does cover fairly well and also when you water it down it's quite good as well so you know it's well worth bearing that in mind so let's get some water into this mixing palette now i use a ceramic one as you can just about here and um, because i tend to find the paint lies nice and flat see this like the yellow there and i can see take off let's do it with the green so this is the um what would you use like leaf green and a little bit of burnt umber in there but you can see what it's like when it's just sort of one or two layers there. But when you add more layers, that's the kind of depth of colour you could get to by using that same wash all the time. See what I mean? That same kind of uh, uh, watery wash. You'll end up with something like this if you put more and more layers on the, over the top. So having a ceramic palette will help the paint line nice and flat. So if you haven't got ceramic palettes and you're using the plastic ones, you'll find they tend to bubble up like a big bubble in the bottom, don't they? Um, whereas this one tends to work really well. So you've got some white kind of sources from your tea set, which you don't use anymore. They've been sat in the cupboard for years gone by. Then they'll probably work as well um, because we've been ceramic of some form. And I'm going to just mix this to a kind of creamy consistency. Like so that. And roll it and pull away. Remember, load it, roll it, dab it to get a nice fine point on the tip. And then we can start adding a little bit of watercolor white in there as well. Um, the Art Hive, I like silver black velvet brushes at the moment. Use a size 4 or 8. They have a lot of water, but you can give them a really nice point too. I've never used those actually, I must admit. It's not one I've ever tried. Now then, just to be cautious, when you first add white, try to go for the largest area. So this is, even though you, this is large, is it? Yeah, okay, Paul. Try to go for a large area, something like that there. That'll do. I have to weaken that a little bit. Now with watercolor white, you find the weaker the mix, the duller it will dry. 
And again, I've done little videos on this on Patreon and how that all works. Just for the tips and tricks section on there. Um, and just tiny, tiny little marks just at the top of the head. Again, my eyes are flicking back and forward to that reference photo. So quick at the moment. Just reinforce that one a little bit more. Down the back. This area here. Like an elongated triangle, really. Just there. There's a tiny mark there. And there's also one around here. Just right on the very top of the head. If I can't see that, because if it blends into the background too much, I'll add a very fine, very fine line around the outside without making it look too cartoony, if you know what I mean. So I've got to be careful not to do that. And we've got a little white mark there, one here. And we've also got a little fluffy bit just around there as well. A little lifting off at the same time, so from the, outside, from the inside out, we're going to get a tapered line all the way around to give it a bit of a fluff. Again, another white A on the back of the, the body there. You can barely see it. In fact, I can barely see it, so you probably can't. Now then, working around this area. So we get the fluff on. Again, normally you'd pull out, but I can't quite get my hand around there while I've got the camera on. And then coming down the body, just put a few light ones just here and there. Same with the section here. So I'm going to block it in first of all using this white paint. So you can use white gouache as well because it is a water based watercolour. I mean, basically, gouache is, is an opaque version of watercolour, really, isn't it? So it's uh, quite a nice medium, actually. I've only ever used a little bit of white gouache or any, well, gouache in general, really. And just feather that out for there, even though it's not a feather. And a little bit more around there as well. Okay, so now that's gradually building, building up as you can see there. And the good thing about white is that we can add colour over the top. So if we need to add a little bit over there, we can do. But it's not quite the right colour. Now then, looking down here, that's actually, uh, yeah, it's not as bright as the top, is it? So to achieve that, what I need to do is add a little bit, a little bit of water to the mix. So a bit more water in there just to thin it down. And by doing so, when that dries, it will dry a little bit duller. Just pull that back. Okay, here we go. Just a little bit more around there. Tiny, tiny touches. And you find that this should dry duller than up there. Because I've added a bit more water to it. Leaving gaps in between. Just kind of a bit of a bit of a fluff in there, really, more than anything we're trying to put. And this area here needs a bit of fluffing up as well. So again, pull towards the area that you need to fluff. Don't know if that sounds right, fluffing it up, does it? And tiny, tiny area here, is in the tip of the brush. And there, I can brighten this if need be. I don't want to go too bright just yet, because we can, as I say, we can add colour over the top. A little bit more around there. Okay. Now, looking at that colour on there, I'm going to go back to the green colour. Remember that lime green? Well, it's a leaf green, isn't it? Which is that one there. Okay. I'm going to just pop in a little bit of that in there. Now, the thing with watercolour white as well, you've got to be careful not to keep going over the top of it because it will move it. And you can only do this when it's really dry. This has dried really quickly. I've got some very large lights here at the moment, so just to make this stand out enough for you. And then onto his kneecap around there. Add a little bit of colour over that white. Because this is a more shaded side as well of the, of the head. Um, back to the white again. And I'm going to look around the legs now. A little bit of highlight on the legs. Just see some of the light areas just there. Tiny, tiny touches here and there. The same with that one there, yeah. Small, tiny marks dotted around. 
Now this is quite bright around that area there, so a tiny mark there. And we've got the different sections here as well, so I'm going to just make sure. A few little highlighted areas you can barely see, just around there as well. And then, just on this leg, again, tiny, tiny taps, barely touching. There you go, it's a bit brighter. Brighten that one a bit. And that one there. And that is about it for the for the main butterfly itself. A few more around there. And there we go. So I think what I'm going to do, I might leave it at this stage. I'll check see if anybody's got any comments first. I might leave it at this stage and then next week, hopefully next week, we'll see how we get on time-wise. I'll pop back on again for you for about 45 minutes to an hour. And we'll work on the leaf itself, okay? We're not complete the leaf, I don't think, within that space this time, because I've tend to put a lot of detail in. But we can work on the leaf and start working on the sections within there. I'll show you how to kind of produce that and kind of make it look a bit more realistic as well. So, what we got? Anybody else on there? Nope. So, you've got any last-minute questions, please fire away. And if you're watching this, by the way, on catch-up, don't worry, I can still get emails from, from uh, YouTube. They still me message me when there's a comment on there, and I'll reply to you as well. Now, please click on that subscribe button down, down below. So like it, subscribe it, and click on that bell icon so you know that you're going to get confirmation and uh, when I'm going to go live again of any new videos which I put on here just for you to watch as well. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little bit more on here before I go. The fingers are painting as well. You can get carried away. And you can lose time. Time just flies by. It doesn't feel like I've been on here for... 57 minutes already. I know, where's time gone to? It really doesn't. Just a few more little touches here and there. I'm trying to think about the overall shape as well. Tiny little marks that go through the dark areas. I can just see that there. Okay. Right, so I'm going to say goodbye to you all now. And um, that's not a problem at all, Whispering Cauldron. Thank you for streaming live. Very much appreciated. You're more than welcome to. I've quite enjoyed doing that. I always do. So you know where I am if you need me. <laughs> That's not a problem at all. Um, thank you for watching me today. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. But remember, if you ever get a chance, pop along to patreon.com. Just up the top right hand corner there. And say hello on there as well. And uh, I'll see you around. No, don't forget, I've got 50, 50 tutorials on there now. Wow, I know, two and a half years worth. And you've got access to all of that for $10 a month. What more can you ask for? So until next time around, I'm going to say goodbye. And I'll try and come back again, hopefully next week for you. So, see you soon. Hi, now stay tuned and I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to get from being here on Patreon and how to paint wildlife in watercolour. Let's get stuck in. So what I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go for a variety of different subjects, from dogs, cats, from large right down to little tiny uh, creatures as well. And I guide you through this, as I say, step by step all the way from the beginning right to the final brush strokes. For the $10 tier, you have to get access to the entire back catalogue from over two and a half years of video content and tuition. So all of that will keep you painting for many months to come. Now bearing in mind as well with these video tutorials, I do release a brand new one every single month. So every month we get a new subject to work on, but you still got access to all the back catalogues I mentioned, which means you can paint at your own leisure. So all I mean by that is that you don't have to get that project done that particular month. You can go back two years ago, for example, and work for one of our projects from then, then come back and then work on this one another time. There's no rush, there's no panic, and you can paint at your own leisure and at your own speed. You'll also gain access to all the shorter video tutorials as well. So these are all the short ones such as painting a feather, working on, say for example, a hare's eye, working on fur, and many other subjects which I'm putting on here as well. I also provide the outline drawing and reference photograph which go alongside the main videos which we have on here plus the shorter videos as well. So you can simply print these off and use them for your paintings. Now each month I write a PDF document which includes all the reference photos as well. Now this PDF document will go alongside that current month's main video project so you can use it instead of or alongside of, it's entirely your choice. But also you gain access to the PDF document for every single month that you are a member. So ideal for those times you don't want to sit by the computer whilst you're trying to paint. Now one of the things I do provide is my companion page. Now all this simply is, 
is all the links to everything that we have on Patreon on my personal website. So the idea is all our shorter video tutorials are on here, so the $5 tiers and above. The $10 tier levels and above are the main big larger videos. So you can choose whatever you want to have a go at, okay, from here. The idea of this companion page is that when you click on, say, for example, scroll through to see what you fancy, say for example the tiger, you click on the tiger tutorial, that will take you back to Patreon itself with everything to do with the tiger videos. So that will give you the outline drawing, the reference photograph, and all the part numbers to do with the tiger. So it's really handy to go through that and have a look what you fancy. And one thing I'd recommend with this companion page as well is to bookmark it on your browser. All right, so save it so you can access it really quickly to choose whatever you want to have a go at painting. Not forgetting as well, I produce quite a lot of tips and tricks videos for you to go through and also about videos to do with materials that we use here and ideas, questions, that kind of thing. So have a look on my special companion website to go with Patreon and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now if you're a Facebook user, I've also created a special closed Facebook group for my members as well. So this is a place really where we tend to discuss other things or questions and answers to do with Patreon and some of the tutorials which we work on. So you can do that either here on Patreon itself or on our Facebook group. Now I'm actually adding a third video in every month as well. So if you're on the $10 level, you get access to the main long video project, which could be three or four hours long. You'll also get access to the $5 tier level project as well, which is another video project which is used as something to do with like painting a dog's nose or very small projects which you can work on if you haven't got a lot of painting time. But additional to all of that, I'm also going to be working on a few little botanical items as well just so you can add these as extra kind of embellishments within your main project paintings. So you're not going to get one, you're not going to get two, but you're going to get three video projects to work on every single month. And remember, you don't have to do it that particular month anyway. You can do it six months down the line. It doesn't really make any difference. And all at your own leisure. Now, as for joining, have a look for the different tier levels from the $5, $10, the $20 level and the $30 level. And you see there's different benefits for different ones. Right, so there you go. That'll give us some ideas what Patreon is all about and what you would learn through being here on my Patreon channel. As you know, there's a massive catalogue now of things that you can learn from. And uh, don't forget, you get the outline drawing, the reference photo, everything else for you to kind of get stuck in straight away. So if you find this is exactly what you want to learn on how to paint wildlife in watercolour, then click on join now, choose a level that you want to subscribe to and make a start.